So I'm sure you all know by now that Dragon's Dogma 2 does not hold your hand. There's so many things you've got to learn about the game and the way that it's designed, there's a lot of things that if you do them wrong, it can actually really impact the game. So today I wanted to go over five mistakes you should avoid making in Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, the first thing I think a lot of people are going to do wrong, how I did this myself when I started, is picking a vocation and sticking to it. Now, don't get me wrong. If you really like a play style, don't let me tell you how to play the game. This game should be played however you want to play it, but I will say that there is genuine benefit to playing each vocation, even just for a little bit. For those who weren't aware, there are vocation augments that you can unlock as you level them up, and these augments can be equipped to other vocations. So for example, there's one called Thew that you unlock at level six of the fighter vocation, which allows you to carry more weight. And once you unlock that, you can equip it on any other vocation, meaning that later on in the game, you can just play as whichever one you want. For example, maybe your favorite play style is the mage, and therefore your mage will actually be stronger because you've unlocked the best augments from each vocation. So give all of the vocations a try. It is absolutely worth it in the long run. And even if you are dead set on which one is your favorite, you can still go to that in the future, but it will be stronger because you have done this earlier on in the game. Now, the next mistake you can make is paying money to rest at any of the inns around the world. For example, if you return to Vernworth after a long battle, you might want to rest to get your HP back, but do not do that at an inn. It'll cost around 2000 gold or sometimes a thousand gold depending on where you are and obviously over time that all adds up now the reason you don't want to do that is that you can get your very own house in Vernworth very easily as well and once you get that you can rest for free as well as getting storage in that house as well now to get the house you are going to need 20,000 gold but the way you earn it in this game I'm going to assume you have that already if not go and check out my latest video going over some of the best early unlocks that video alone probably has about 40,000 gold to be earned if not more than that. So be sure to go and check that out if you don't have the 20,000 gold. Now, once you have the gold, head to this area of Vernworth that is just behind the inn. You'll come across this NPC who is calling out to you. Now, just go talk to her. She'll give you a quest, which is to essentially just house sit for her for seven days while she's away on holiday. Once the quest has started, go into the house and simply rest until morning seven times in a row. After that, she will return, at which point she offers you the house for 20,000 gold. Buy the house and now you have a permanently free resting place as well as storage which is a lot easier to access than having to go to the inn. Now speaking of storage this one is very basic but I think a lot of people could potentially overlook this because it's one of those things that just doesn't really get explained to you in the game not unless you go looking for it anyway. For those who weren't aware the inns at each major location have a storage system and one thing you don't want to be doing is throwing away or selling your important items to make room in your inventory. I'm sure you guys have run into a lot of times when you are carrying too much weight and you just need to get rid of something and it is easy to either just discard items or sell them and try and clear out your inventory you don't want to be doing that especially when it comes to items that you get from harder enemies for example so a prime example of that is if you kill a griffin you get the griffin pinion those are not easy to come by because griffins are bloody hard to kill so do not sell those things put all of that stuff in your storage by like i said heading to an inn or now that you've bought that house you can do it at the house as well anything that you could possibly need later on, store them, don't sell them. Like I mentioned before, you can make so much money in this game very easily without even trying. Personally, I have never once even tried to go and like grind for gold or anything, and I've got over 100,000 gold at this point. So yeah, there's no need to make money from them. Save all of those items that you get from the harder enemies and stuff like that. A lot of them can be used to enhance your weapons down the line, and you never know when you might need them. Now, before we go any further, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Since I've started covering Dragon's Dogma 2, over 99% of the returning views on this channel have come from those of you who are not subscribed to the channel. So if you have watched multiple videos and it turns out you are not subscribed, go ahead and do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It would be very much appreciated. And there is so much more content on the way. Now, the next mistake is very quick and simple, and it is to do with the rift stones that allow you to hire pawns from the rift. I'm sure you guys have come across plenty of the broken rift stones that you need to sort of interact with at which point they kind of reform themselves and start working. But what you want to do instead is instead of just normally interacting with them, you actually want to stand right on top of them before you interact with them. Now, I don't know if this is meant to happen. I have no idea what the go is here, but this causes them to sort of glitch out because of where you're standing. So the rift stone can't really be created because you're standing on top of it. And then instead of creating that rift stone, it actually just spawns an offline pawn for you as in a Capcom made pawn rather than allowing you to access 
just the online ones. It's almost like it treats it as if you are not connected to the servers or something. Now, the reason you want to do this is because generally these Capcom made pawns are really solid. They're also, in my opinion, kind of cooler because they're not made by players. So they're a bit more immersive to the world, but most importantly, they have world intel. So what that means is that when you are lost on a quest, for example, and you don't really know where to go, pretty much all of the Capcom made pawns will know what you need to do and they will actually offer to show you the way. When they prompt you, when they say like, hey, I know where we need to go, you can just press up on the D-pad to say go and they will actually lead you to where you need to be. So that is the key difference between the Capcom ones and the player made ones. You can obviously come across these throughout the world randomly, but this allows you to pretty much spawn one on the spot. At the end of the day, you can access the Rift Stone in Vernworth whenever you want. So you don't need hundreds of these throughout the map. You only need one to be able to hire the online pawns. So definitely do it this way instead of the normal way. Now, the last mistake, well, actually it's not the last mistake because I do have a few little bonus ones at the end, but the last key mistake anyway, is not unlocking the port crystals in each major location. Now the port crystals allow you to fast travel. Yes, contrary to popular belief on the internet over the course of this week, you do not have to pay $3 on the Steam store to fast travel. You can literally do it for free. And that is how you do it via these port crystals. Now they're pretty hard to come by. They're not all over the place. So make sure that anytime you ever see one on the map, they look like this on the map. And this is what they look like in person. Just make sure you go up and interact with it. And from there, you can always fast travel to it, provided you have enough spare ferry stones. Now, like I said, for a few quick bonus mistakes you guys could be making, I didn't really think these were worthy of a whole section of the video, but they are still worth knowing. One is to do with your settings and the other is to do with a future quest line. Now, the first one in the menu, head to the system settings, head to controls and change the toggle hail option to hold. This just means that now when you go and talk to anyone like a vendor or a main character in the story, for example, all you need to do is just press B or circle or whatever the keybind is on PC instead of having to hold it. And that is a very insignificant change, but trust me, it is definitely worth it. It will save your controller in the long run. As for the other bonus one, if you guys haven't found any yet, make sure to remember where you find your first seeker token. Now this was brought to my attention in the comments. Shout out to you guys for letting me know you guys are legends, but there will be a side quest later in the game that requires you to go back to where you found your first seeker token and find it again. Now, the unfortunate news is if you guys have found at least one seeker token and you can't remember where the first one was, well, GG's, you're in the same boat as me. We are done for boys. That quest is essentially void to us. Now, if you haven't found one yet, or if you have found one, but you can remember where it was, put a waypoint marker on the map where it was, or at the very least, just take a screenshot of the map or something like that, as that will help with the quest down the line. If you forget where that first seeker token is, you essentially cannot do that quest. So make sure to remember that. That is something that I have personally made a mistake with. And now I seemingly cannot do that quest unless I can just luck out or something like that. So anyway, those are some of the easiest mistakes you guys should be avoiding in Dragon's Dogma 2. If you enjoyed the video, I would massively appreciate it if you guys subscribed, as that would massively help me out. And there's so much more content like this on the way, so you guys should make sure you don't miss out on any of those upcoming Dragon's Dogma 2 videos. But with that being said, thank you all very much for watching. You guys have a great day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.